Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us once more for Wednesdays with Ray as we continue our sock series. We missed you last week, but we are still on track if you've been doing the knit along with us. We did the last video go over how to do picking up stitches for our gusset and doing our decreases. I did recommend going over our previous tutorial video back a few weeks ago when we went over the slip twist purl decrease, which I use in place of the slip slip knit decrease reason being is it gives you a much smoother line of decreases rather than getting sort of that stare effect that you can sometimes get with the slip slip knit. I also recommend using this when doing your decreases for your toe. As you can see, I've got a really nice line of decreases going here. These were my slip twist pearls in place of my slip slip knit, and these were my knit two togethers. Works beautifully on both sides of the sock on those decreases, and I get a really nice even line. So if you have come to the point where you have finished these decreases for your toe and are ready to graph them together with Kitchener Stitch, the technique that I'm going to show you today is going to show you how to do Kitchener Stitch as a modified three needle bind off instead of using a tapestry or darning needle. The reason that I like to do this with my Kitchener bind offs, there isn't a ton of stitches that you have to graft on these ones, but any time that I was using a darning needle or tapestry needle to do my Grafting, I was noticing that I was having tension issues that I would have to go back and pay attention to later. Using this method effectively eliminates that issue and everything will be at gauge as it should be. So what I have done here is to make up a little mini toe so that we can get used to grafting. I've attached a contrasting piece of yarn so that it's very easy to see as we work. With your own toe, when you get to this point, you are going to want to cut your working yarn so it's somewhere between 16 and 18 inches in length. You want to have enough to work across the stitches that you're grafting and then have enough to weave in after. So what you're going to need to do this is an extra needle in the correct gauge, same as what you're using here. If you do have to switch gauges, it's better to go down rather than up so that you don't distort your gauge any more than you have to. Just as if we were going to graft with a darning needle or tapestry needle. I do have my stitches separated out on two needles with my working yarn attached to the needle in the back. We do have to do two setup stitches to get started, so that's what we're going to do here. And we will alternate working between the front needle and the back needle. So to do our first setup, we're just going to knit that first stitch and pull the yarn all the way through, leaving that on the needle. Moving to our back needle, we are going to purl and pull that yarn all the way through, leaving that stitch on the needle. All right, now we're ready to actually get into the rhythm of grafting. So just as it's helpful when you're doing grafting with a darning needle, I like to sort of chant out what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So in this case, I'm going to Curl, pull all the way through, discard, knit, pull all the way through, leave it on. Moving to the back needle, we are going to knit, pull all the way through, and discard, purl, Pull all the way through and leave on. So when you get into that rhythm, that's going to be purl through off knit through on knit through off. Purl through on. Purl through off. Knit through on. Knit through off. Purl through on. 
And you can see with my contrasting yarn here, let me bring that into focus for you, that the nice thing about this is they're staying in gauge with good tension. I'm not going to go have to go back and adjust that when I'm done. Let me work across and show you what that's going to look like. So we've almost come to the end here. You can see these red stitches very clearly where I've been crafting and they've maintained tension so I don't really have to go back and mess with those at all the same way that you would if you were doing a darning needle. And that's because doing that three needle bind off essentially preserves our tension. So let's continue starting over with the chant. Purl. Through. Off. Knit through on. Moving to the back needle. Knit through off. Purl through on. Now as we've come to the last two stitches, you're just going to continue as you were. Purl, through, and off. Knit, through, off. You will still use a darning needle to weave in your ends, but as you can see, I don't actually have to mess with my tension on this end at all. At this point, you will use your tapestry or darning needle just to bring your end into the inside of your sock and weave in your ends in your preferred method. As you can see, these are my grafted stitches in red across here. My tension is almost identical, bring that a little closer so you can see, to my existing stitches. So I don't have to have any need to go back and make adjustments later and don't have to worry about puckering or loops in my work. Once again, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon as I showed you this grafting technique. This is one of my absolute favorite ways to accomplish kitchener stitch, and I hope it's helpful for you and all of your sock making moving forward.